A bit more than a year ago, Blizzard added new portraits if you get 1000 wins in ranked mode plus arena. This made me want to make this moment somewhat remarkable and make something special for getting those 1000 wins for a class. So I've decided to replay some of the older decks which I enjoyed playing back in the past and to relieve these memories in 2020. I must note that Mage is not the first class for me to get 1000 wins with. Actually it was Priest, but I was quite busy smashing enemy faces with big boars, and so I wasn't able to make something interesting from it. Serious? I've decided to pick three decks, which are quite old, and they're ranging in time from 2016 to mid 2017. Let's look at these decks in practice. And let's start with the all time classic and one of my favorite decks of all time, Freeze Mage. The idea of this deck hasn't changed at all since its inception. You can split all your cards in your deck in three categories the draw, the stall, the burn. As a combo deck, it's not a surprise to anyone that you bring with yourself a decent amount of card draw to cycle through your deck very quickly. It's worth noting that Mage got some of the best controlling tools available in the game, and that's Freezing Minions. In particular, Tomb Sayer plus Frost Nova is a 5 mana combo that allows you to stall the board for at least one extra turn guaranteed. Your opponent has either to trade tons of their resources into killing Tomb Sayer and so they are not doing anything to your face or they just give up for a turn because they can't do anything to it. And most notably, Mage had one of the best and most efficient burn spells ever. Especially the Icelands that was able to deal 4 damage to any character if it is frozen. And so I believe the rotation of this spell into Hall of Fame made it so we haven't seen any really good freeze mage decks after its rotation. The opponent will probably do some dirty stuff with the mech warper and galvanizer that discarded tons of their mechs in their hand. Oh wow. Now we are in a pretty grim spot. Because not only we were not able to kill anything from their side of the board, but they've also developed tons of tempo. Doomsayer plus Nova didn't pay off. And now our chances for winning are quite low, unless we will be able to remove the board with another Doomsayer Frost Nova. Because otherwise they will slam us with their very big max very quickly. Okay, I must pain. I collide a pain. To maybe draw something good. It's not very efficient for me to use Icelands on the minion, although we should try and not deviate from our plan. We should stall the board, find our answers, and maybe we'll be able to throw all our stuff into their face and kill them. Play nice block number one. They'll pop it out. We need to find some ways to defend ourselves and not allow them to pop for the second ice block immediately. Wow, they draw so much stuff. Now they got much more things to threaten us with. Oh, 
Okay. There is no way they will kill us through Ice Barrier and Blizzard. And so we will be able to set up something by playing Ice Block on next turn. And maybe they will not be able to break through it. Okay, so sure thing I have to go with Mirror Entity plus Ice Block. We got a decent amount of burn spells, so if they will not break through it, we will be able to Alex Traza them and hopefully finish them. There is no need to keep Ice Lands for now, because if we want to freeze a minion, we have only two options, choose Frostbolt or Ice Lands. And without any Frostbolts in our hand, we will not be able to deal any damage. I expect them to have a mech with Magnetize and Rush, and so they will break through both secrets quite easily. And here it is. At this point I don't believe I can win this. So let's move to another game. Alright, so now we got Priest against ourselves. It's probably some sort of Rena deck of Big Priest. And so we should just mulligan for all our card draw to be able to cycle through our deck very quickly. Okay, so there is not much interesting we can do at the start. Just spin their face. We don't need to use Doomsayers. It might be useful a bit later. We can play Arcane Intellect on 3. We also got the Vice Engineer, which is pretty good. And another one. Our current hand is quite good for now, since we are able to draw in most stuff with Novice Engineer, Blood Mage Thanos and another Novice Engineer. Even with enemies Raza being played on turn 4, currently we are doing quite well against slower decks, amassing the burn in our hands. Okay, so I cannot let them hit us with the Raza all the time. It's fine to use two torches, because then we are able to draw fireballs with discount. And they're playing quite slowly, so I think we should be able to draw everything we need. We've got a decent amount of answers in our hand, although we have nothing to play proactively right now. So let's just see what they do and answer that. I don't mind losing Ice Barrier. I've got another one in my hand. 
And I wasn't even thinking they will be able to proc it anyway. They are in a search for Anduin. They're playing Kazakis very proactively, probably trying to find the part of the spell that allows them to draw cards. And for as long as they don't get their machine gun working, they can't do anything. Ah, that changes nothing. Two minions are not really threatening to us. Well, we've got enough stuff to discount, so it's just slammed Forison. Okay, they've got Forest End of their own, but still, without ending, they can't do anything. That's the most important part to remember. Even if enemy Taurus and discounts their hand by two already, I should just cycle through because I've got so many good child decks. So we've got tons of damage already in our hand, plus Talnus. So if we manage to draw Alex Straza very quickly, it should be game over for Priest. Will they kill the Talnos? Because they are dangerously close to be dead. Wow, and now they are punished for it. It should be lethal, right? So 7 plus 7 plus 8. Plus 10. 32. I got punished for not killing Talnus. And that's how we win a sub optimal, but still tier 1 deck. Okay, so for our second deck, we've got a deck with many names the Ginter Mage, the Burn Mage, the Control Mage. I prefer to call it the Control Mage. Even though it had the potential to win games very quickly. What essentially made me like this deck so much is its versatility. With one mana mana worm back then. Certain amount of cheap spells. Sometimes you were able to snowball really hard right from the start. But most of the time your job is to to answer enemy threats, for example, is Fire Warrior. The opponent's deck looks like a Fire Warrior from 2017, so we're actually having a three year old matchup with the same exact cards in 2020, which is very interesting. I will say that this deck has probably some of the most enjoyable gameplay I've had ever. So they're not pushing us very hard, I think we can try and discover something. 
and the foul boat is pretty good for us, especially with the volcanic potion. Okay, they've got some amount of damage, but we are still able to defend ourselves. Even though this deck was called the Burn Mage, and sometimes you were snatching the games by throwing something like two fireballs on one turn and fire blasts on the next turn. You're mostly using these tools to protect yourself, and in case you're facing very slow matchups, you are preserving these burn spells to destroy enemy phase. Okay, we got a lot of pressure on ourselves, but we got Ice Block and Medivh Valley. I believe in this matchup having an Ice Barrier at this point is a bit better, but we are still more or less fine. This deck had some amount of random generation, but not to the extreme there was and there is right now. Even though sometimes Primordial Glyph plus Mana Worm were able to snowball very hard. Fortunately, we were able to draw a secret from the Archaeologies with top deck, so now we have one more extra turn. If we get to cast Alex Straza, then it's a basically game over for Pyrovody. But we need to draw something good. To survive turn 8. And look, it's a Frostbolt. Now only charged minions can do job against us. And so we are now ahead on the board, we are able to kill Fire Warrior. Essentially that's the gameplay that made me enjoy playing this deck so much back then and still having fond memories from it to this day. And we got Lethal. And I believe getting the first legend with this deck plus a Miracle Rogue is still playing its role for me live in this deck. So this game was kinda short, but sometimes that's how things are going. And we got our 1000 wins and mage. And we got a pretty portrait for our mage Shayna. Probably one of the better portraits that were done. And for our third deck we got a bit of a meme, but a meme that worked quite well back then. So, I'm not a general fan of Secret Mage. But, I was fan of this version of Secret Mage. And so, this build is from the Knights of the Frozen Throne set. There was no LNF in the game yet, and so it was very hard back then for you to play all your cards from your deck. And so, Hammond the Jungle Hunter helps you by removing all your very cheap cards, which are mostly bad in top deck mode, and leave yourself with only big stuff and bird spells. And we should start pressuring them at some capacity, because if we don't, then they'll probably kill us with their ballista shot, dealing free damage every single time it's getting used. Bitter Chai Hydra was a very popular top end minion for aggressive decks. As 5 mana 8 8, even with a certain downside, it was still not enough to be dismissed. It was really, really great back then. And they got charged for themselves. So they're still getting control of the board in some way.
So most of the time you're not even facing the problem of getting damaged. Oh wow, I have her. Now I don't really think we have a way to get back. Although we still have one turn left, we're actually quite close to kill them if they don't kill us right at this turn. Oh wow, so they kill us with the house. But we were relatively close for this one. So, let's try another one. The deck was still not there quite yet. And we have the general stuff that was played back then. In every mage deck, like Archaeologist, the mana worm, it costed one mana back then, the Primordial Glyph, even stuff like Fireland Sporal and Fireball were popular in many many mage decks. With Hammett, you limit yourself to draw only good cards. And I hope we will have it in action. So the opponent is answering all our stuff and they're drawing quite heavily. So it makes me think it's a mecha -thun. With mecha -thun, we must do stuff pretty quickly, because otherwise we will have troubles. So let's play Frozen Clone, and maybe we'll get some use from it. Our hand is a bit heavy, with both Hawkfire Lens portals and one bomb maybe in our, in our hand. We still have quite a bit of good cards that apply pressure. Okay, they've tested out the counter spell. And they are probably not doing much this turn. Alright, they do. interesting to see that some mechanics that are feeling like a classic are not still there, feel like Rush. And this Hydro is doing the job, even attacking twice means that opponent loses more than half of their health. Oh wow, they got hammered of their own, and they're pretty close of finishing the game. And Plague of Flames. And we got lucky for our Hydra to not be destroyed. Let's see if we get lethal. Okay, now we do, because we can play Rabbi Spellstone and Firelands Portal, so it's 7 damage. I also can pick just the Passive Blast and Ping. And so essentially we get the same amount of damage. 
and they're done. And so, here we have it. We've got three wins with the older decks for today. Thanks to everyone for watching. I do consider making this style of video for a few more other classes. I'd like to hear your feedback and comments about the format, the amount of decks being played, just about everything that you have in your mind. And with this, if you enjoy watching this video, please consider subscribing to not miss out any new videos that will come out on the channel.